Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Instead of like the full bib waders. Yep. Maybe just some pants. We're going this way. Here at the spillway at dam site three. Beautiful morning. Got some cloud cover. Should be a good fishing day. Let's get after them. So this morning, I'm gonna be using this little jig head. And you can see that I'm using my hemostats to get the paint off of this eyelet. And I always think that that's really important because the, the line is much less likely to snap or fray. And we're just going to do an improved trilene. A lot of people like to fish with Palomar knots, and I like them as well. Palomars are real good knots. Um, this improved trilene is good. You just bring the loop back through it again. Tie this about six or seven times, wrap it around. And run it back through both holes. Wet it. And then cinch it down. And then just snip off the end. I didn't think I had any of these with me. Um, but I've got a couple of Shane Schweitzer's Outcast. These little three inch neds. So I've got that in my 1 16th ounce fluorescent green lemon yellow pumpkin color. 1 16th ounce Archie jig head. And I had a pretty good hit on the first one. Let's see if we can do a repeat. Grab a fish or two. Oh, that was a good hit. Sugar. Oh, come on, come on. Pick it up. I'm getting attacked right around that corner. See where there's a bend in that seam. Just to this side of it. They're just whacking it. But I'm wondering if I need something a little bit thinner. Or, with any luck, can I get something that's... a little bit bigger to come at it. Come on, fish. Come on. Feels good. Oh, I'm off. Shoot. That was a good fish. Son of a gun. I've gotten slammed like three times, which is enough to keep me right where I'm at. I'm going to present some different things to it. Some smaller jerk baits, twitch baits. But uh, they are right. You really have to work for your fish here. Really do. And I am perfectly good with wearing my arm out today. I had something chase it right there. Man, oh man. This is fun. Even though it's not as productive, but... I like this, it's more of a challenge. It's a single hook, it's not treble hooks. Um, so the fish is gonna have less injury, a much cleaner release than three little barbed treble hooks jammed into its mouth. 
Now I did promise a few people some catch and cook. So I will do my best. But I'm fishing with my partner in crime, Kelly. Finally got a day off from work. So hopefully, Kelly will be able to produce a few trout of her own today. like a bass <laughs> first fish of the day for me is a bass and not a bad one for the river not bad at all. all right ah uh, spitting up crayfish just spit out a big old crayfish hey there fella how are you or as bill dance would say how do you do how do you do hey little guy All right. Yeah. All right, little girl. Let's get you back in. See ya. I'm switching batteries now. In case y'all didn't know what I was doing. That's what we're, uh, what we're doing. Oh my gosh, Kelly. Oh my gosh, Kelly. Woo! Lord have mercy, girl. Wow, look at you, Arkansas girl. That's my best trout. That is your personal best. We got Kelly Pickering here at the uh, hatchery on Dam 3 on the spillway side. <laughs> and this thing is a giant, giant bat. I'm calling it a bass, it's so big. I'm gonna let go. Good girl. There we go. Not the big one I just saw jump, but he's nice. Pretty. Good eating size. There's a little guy. That's barely a fingerling. We're not going to touch this little one. We're going to release it right here. Show the camera. Hold up, little fella. Uh-uh. Hang on. There we go. And away you go. This one's not bad.
It's not your size, but it's respectable. That's a nice looking fish. Hey fish heads, we are back at the homestead. Uh, I've got two trout to prepare and this is the part of the video where I've already done most of the prep work. By that I mean whatever area you're going to be working in, you want to start with a clean area. So I've taken care of dishes, I've gotten everything off to the side. I've got two knives. We're not going to need both of these knives. They're both clean. We're going to put the one here in the, in the dish drainer. We are going to be using this knife right here. I'm going to sharpen it. I'm going to show you guys how I do it. I've two. This is usually the easiest way, and it's normally how I do it. Um, but I think it's also important to understand how to properly sharpen a knife on a wedding stone. So we're going to do that, and um, I think it's time to go get the trout out of the uh, out of the cooler. All right, let's get this trout out of here. Now, it's going to be cold overnight here tonight, eh, probably about 38 degrees, um, so the ice would be fine in this cooler, but there's no sense leaving it in there if we don't have to. So all I'm going to do is just get the cooler out of the Jeep, put the hemostats back in, and now let's clean this trout have decided that they are way more important than my trout cleaning section of this video. So we're going to get those little knuckleheads in and feed them. This is always fun. Now the Yorkie Poo is going to go wild. He's going to start bitching at me. You guys hungry? Yeah? Casey. You ready, Casey? Where you go? Casey. Good girl. Molly. Good girl. Come on, rascal. Go ahead and sharpen this knife. An angle is probably the most important thing if you're using this and I don't need the coarse side. There's two sides to these. There's a coarse side to this and the fine and I keep it pretty sharp all the time. So all I'm going to do is at about a 10 to 15 degree angle I'm going to move the blade forward. You should see a little bit of filing and then we just bring it back the opposite direction. I'm going to rinse that off do the same thing on the other side. And move it back. And this is already a sharpened blade. I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of a an edge. You can also move it in a circle. I'm sure there's a lot of different ways that you can sharpen a knife. But it is good and sharp now. And we're ready to go. Okay, well we've sharpened our knife. Turn a little bit of light on because it is getting to the point in the day where that sun is starting to sink low in the sky and I live about uh, an hour and a half from the fishing spot that we were at. Now this bag that I've brought the fish home in is also going to double as what I call the gut bag. Um, it's a nice thick bag. You can use Walmart bags, you can or whatever grocery store, but grocery store bags are pretty flimsy. Um, sometimes you'll get some seepage and this is not going to go in the kitchen trash. This is going to go right out to the trash can outside. Um, especially since we're going to have a cooler evening. The other thing you're going to notice is that I did get some dishes done while I was prepping the area. Didn't really need to show you guys that. However, one thing I am going to do is cover this area. Usually I'm pretty careful and there's no splatter. But, just to be on the safe side. We're going to go ahead and cover this. Make sure nothing gets to the clean dishes. And I could empty this, but we should be okay. 
set up the bag. We'll start with the little guy. I have two trout to clean today. And uh, one thing that I'm a huge proponent of is if I'm not going to eat it and I'm not going to freeze it, I'm not going to keep it. So everything was catch and release today except for these two that are going to be eater fish. Now this is going to be an overnight marinade that I'm going to show you guys. It's one of my favorites. It's going to give it a nice smoky flavor. And then uh, when we actually cook it tomorrow, we're going to stuff it with onions and rice. I'm going to wrap it in bacon. And it's going to have, uh, and actually a little bit of citrus. I think I'm going to squeeze a little lime juice into it. But we're going to marinate it overnight and give it that nice smoked flavor. So what you can see is that I've just gutted it from this bottom peck fin to the throat. You just pretty much just unzip this. Now if it were bigger, if it were a giant trout or a steelhead or a salmon, we'd go ahead and fillet it. These are small and when they're cooked properly, the bone will just kind of slip away from the meat. It's a very easy fish to clean. It's a delicious fish to eat. Not everybody likes these. Um, a lot of people like catfish and walleye. Actually, walleye and perch are my favorites. But you are going to get messy, so be prepared for that. If you've never cleaned a trout before, this is probably the easiest way to clean it. And if you wanted to see a fillet video that I've done, uh, I can link that in the description below. That is going to be the walleye that we caught at Lake Norfolk. So that's going to be down below. I promise. I'm not going to forget. Then pretty much we want to just give it a good rinse because the, uh, the insides of this trout come out very easy. Um, there's just a little bit of blood that will stay on that spine casing, but just a little bit of mild abrasion with your fingernail and that's going to come right out. And that's it. These are so easy. And they, they have scales. All fish have scales. But they have very, very little scales. So there's no need to get the scaler out. I don't think I've ever used a scaler in my life since maybe I was a teenager. Um, I either skin it or I prepare it like this. And since we're stuffing it, this is the way we want to prepare it today. I'm going to bring this right over to the bag. Pop that right in the bag because we're going to marinate inside that bag. Now we're just going to do the other one. Well, this is a bigger one. This is a dandy. Um, not as big as the one that Kelly caught today. Kelly caught a trophy rainbow trout. And she was definitely a a conscientious angler. She released that back into the wild. So if you guys are a little squeamish, I've already put the, uh, <laughs> the squeamish factor indicator into this video. Um, so you guys are hopefully not watching it. Now you can cut this, but usually it'll just rip apart. take out the heart and the liver. That's what we just did. This is a fish's liver. And we're just going to bring our nails down along there. And it is a little bit messy. Um, so if you're going, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do that. Well, I mean, you may never need to. But it's good to know how to do this stuff, at the very least. Um, your supermarket food does come from somewhere, folks. And generally, I would say that people have already done that for you. So if you're not the, the type natured person that can handle this, it's probably not necessary. Or if you do catch and you want to cook it, have somebody else do this. Um, this really doesn't bother me. I always give thanks for the fish that I've caught. Use a knife, just this one little spot. Get this. There we go. 
And again, this is super easy fish to clean. Real nice pink meat. We definitely want to eat it fresh. Frozen's fine too. There's a lot of marinades and things that you can do with trout and salmon. One thing I noticed when I caught this one is that it's blind in this eye. But that's, uh, that's it. You unzip it, run it from its uh, little fin tip right here, one line all the way up to the throat. You gotta take the insides out, but once you take those insides out, that's it, you're on the spine. And then just clean any excess blood away from your spine. Comes out nice and clean. I see a little bit of blood left in here. And that's, that's normal. And you could cook with it, but the quicker you can get this stuff out, um, saltwater fishing, the commercial fishermen, they'll do what's called gill bleeding and they go ahead and snip the gills and they put the fish upside down into a large bucket of water and what that does is it drains all the blood out of the fish so that uh, the taste is a little bit fresher and cleaner it's not quite as gamey and I'm sure if you guys deer hunt you do that with deer and wa maybe walleye as well I don't know um, usually mine doesn't stay deceased long enough without being eaten to worry about it, get it home and clean it pretty quickly. So the next step is going to be making the marinade and the smoke for the overnight. Okay, we now have our trout over here. I've got a little cutting board. The only thing that I'm going to be doing tonight with the cutting board is I'm going to be cutting this lime into quarters. And we're going to squeeze about a half of this lime juice into this smoky, liquidy goodness as we marinate this trout. And that's going to give it a, a real nice, smoky citrus flavor. All right. For that smoky flavor, the first thing, we want to get this wet. Cold water. Don't want to over marinate it. About like that is good. Let that lime get happy with the water in there. And then I've got some liquid smoke. We can pop this open. I'm going to be kind of generous with that because we have a good bit of water in here. Just a little bit of soy sauce. And some Grill Mates Applewood Rub. This is really going to bring out that smoky flavor in it. Don't want to overdo this. All right, and that's going to get happy. Just a hint of Worcestershire, not much. That's it. And all we're going to do is we're going to try and get a good bit of the air out of this. Seal it. Give it a couple of good shakes. And we're going to let this puppy sit overnight. It's day two. Um, we've been marinating our trout overnight in the smoke flavored juice. So we're going to get into actually making the trout for supper. Pull it out of the fridge. Now I've turned this a couple of times just to make sure that both of the trout have gotten completely saturated and have soaked in all that smoky goodness. We're going to stuff both of our trout with rice, onions, and applewood thick cut bacon. Now if you remember yesterday, part of what I used is this applewood 
raw, but it's a McCormick Grill Mate. It's fairly inexpensive as far as spices go. But to that, we're also going to add some real thick cut bacon. Everything goes well with bacon, right? Right. So we don't need a whole lot of bacon. We only have two pieces of trout, or actually two fish that we're going to be stuffing. So we don't need to make the entire pound of bacon. So I've just uh, pretty much slit this open. And I'm going to take a few pieces just like that. And we're going to put it on the pan. Medium heat. I have an electric skillet, so. So I've got about six pieces of bacon on. We're going to let that get all happy in the pan. Turn it down just a little bit. It's only going to be on medium. While that's going, we're going to turn on this uh, water for the rice. And I've got one cup of rice. Again, you don't need a whole lot of rice either because you're working with just two fish today. Um, again, like I said yesterday, I only keep as much as I'm going to eat. I like it fresh. I'd prefer not to freeze trout, although I will for the winter. Um, and we're using Riceland rice today. I live in rice country. I'm in Arkansas. And Riceland has a factory right here in Jonesboro. Got one red onion, and we're not going to use all of this. Going to use about half of this, and then once the bacon is done cooking, we're going to go ahead and drain off some of that bacon grease, and we're going to drop the onion right into the uh, the pan and let that cook down. We'll put half of this onion back in the fridge. What we're doing here, little sized pieces, because remember, we're going to be mixing this with the bacon and the rice. Don't want to overcook this either. You want a little bit of crisp to it, but it is going to continue to get a little bit crispier in the oven. Bring that over here, let that drain off. Now we've got a boil going on here. We're going to add this in. I'm going to give it one or two stirs. I've, while the camera was off, I've chopped up some bacon into sizable pieces that we can use to kind of mix everything in. I'm going to give this rice another quick stir. It's coming along very nicely. Matter of fact, this is just about done. I'd give it maybe two, three more minutes on low heat. And I'm preheating the oven to 375. I'm not going to smoke this on the grill or the smoker today. Um, we're just going to heat it up in the oven. So we're going to bake this. I'm all about ease. So we're using aluminum foil. That way, instead of having to do another dish after this, because I've got plenty of dishes I'm going to have to do after this anyways, we're just going to be able to just pull this aluminum foil up, throw it in the trash can, and we're done with it. Next part of the process, we're going to cook these onions down, reduce that, let them get all tender. We're using a red onion for this. It's not quite as sweet. That's all right. We kind of want that smoky flavor, remember. So I've got my burner back on. Let the pan reheat. I got rid of the excess grease in here. There is a little bit left and the trapping, so all this is going to cook together for about 10 minutes, if that probably do between 5 and 10 and I'm going to turn this on back on medium while I've got everything else going on um, I want to take just a couple of seconds to go ahead and open this up oh wow that smells so good already that smoky flavor is going to be all throughout this trout if y'all don't want to touch the trout you don't have to I've got tongs I want to try and keep my hands as clean as I can while I'm prepping this stuff I will obviously have to touch it when I'm stuffing it. Cool thing about working in these Ziploc bags is that once you're finished with the liquid, now we're not going to use any of the liquid that's left in this bag, so we're just going to zip that back up, get as much of the air out as we can. Finish sealing it, and then we're going to pop it right in the trash. We're done with this bag. 
Oh wow, that, you guys can't smell this, but it's got that really good smoky smell to it. And I used liquid smoke hickory, which is probably the most common. I have a pecan also, but eh. There we go, turning that heat up made all the difference. Now because we have bacon, I'm not adding salt to the onions. If I didn't have bacon, I would add salt. I might add a little bit of pepper, but not much else. Keeping a lid on something helps keep the moisture in whatever it is that you're cooking. So if you don't want moisture in what you're cooking, keep the lid off. If you do, keep it on. Now as you guys can see, one cup of rice, that's one cup. Look at how well it expands. That could feed six people. Yep. Wow, that smells so good, y'all. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now we're going to turn the burner off. My oven is ready, so everything's coming together very nicely. Now, to this onion. I'm going to add all the bacon back in. And we're going to spoon some rice into this. Why waste another dish when you can just mix it in stuff that you've already messed up? That's your trout stuffing right there. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. All my burners are off. My oven is preheated. And I've got two beautiful trout over here that were caught fresh yesterday. We'll stuff the big one first. We can pretty much use the same spoon. This is hot, so be careful for your fingers. And this, now you know the real reason why I didn't fillet the trout, although they're a little bit small to fillet. Trout is super, super easy to clean super super easy to cook really don't need to take the scales off of it if you don't fillet it now we've got one trout full move this out of the way let's get our second trout full you guys this is going to be so good Now, if you guys have food allergies, that's one thing that I haven't talked about yet, but if you guys are allergic to anything, I can't imagine y'all are allergic to rice, but maybe. There's other stuff that you can put inside your trout if you want to do a stuffed trout. You can stuff it with fruit. Um, you can do like a almost like a Mexican, like a cilantro and salsa. There's a lot of different stuff you can do with this. A lot of folks think that trout is gamey. It's not. It's a very white flaky tender food um, and we're just going to kind of overlap that do the same with the other one just kind of push that up against it that should be enough for the stuffing the last step is one of the easiest slice of all. it really thin just a few pieces. Make sure your knife is sharp. We're just going to put a couple of slices over top of each one. Wow, it smells so good in here. We're going to have so much fun eating this. You and me, you guys. We have two trout freshly caught on the Spring River in the Ozarks of Arkansas. We've got it uh, stuffed with rice and bacon and onions, a little bit of pepper in the mix, and a little bit of basil in the rice. Put that all together. You saw how we prepped it. Um, now it's going to go in the oven at 375 for about 45 minutes. And it is going to be good, y'all. Go. You know what that means? The trout is done. 
Y'all ready for this? I know I am. Ooh, that looks good. It smells really good. Wow, y'all. And voila. I don't know if I can wait, you guys. I might have to take a little bite of this. Oh, oh man. That is so good. Skin just flakes back and it comes right away from the bone. Just like I said it would. That's our catch and cook. We're complete. I'm going to eat some dinner.